Want to save hundreds of dollars at the vet? You? Huh? Do you want to save hundreds of dollars at the vet? Who doesn't? In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and some secrets about how to save money at the vet that I wish I had known when I got my very first Chihuahua. Hi everyone, my name is Linda and this is Cora. Welcome to Chi Chi's and Me Chihuahua Reality. If you're new here, welcome. And if not, then welcome back and thanks so much for watching. I have over 25 years experience raising and training Chihuahuas, but not only that, I am so passionate about Chihuahuas that I have spent years studying and researching the Chihuahua breed. Can you say hi, Cora? Just say hi. Hi, say hi, Cora. What I've learned, I want to share with you so you and your Chihuahua can live the best life ever together. Isn't that right, Cora? There are some health issues that Chihuahuas are prone to and they can be very costly to treat. And that's why I want to share with you how you can either avoid them altogether or to treat them from home, thus saving you hundreds of dollars in vet bills. There are five health issues that Chihuahuas particularly are prone to, and they are patellar luxation, tracheal collapse, hypoglycemia, hydrocephalus, and gingivitis or teeth issues. So let's start with patellar luxation. That is also known as floating kneecap. And it's a very common problem with small breed dogs. What it is is when the dog's patella or kneecap slips out of its normal position. The patella in dogs is shaped like an almond and what it does is it assists in knee extension. The symptoms are very often described as your chihuahua suddenly went lame and then a few seconds later he was just fine as if nothing had ever happened. I'll never forget the first time that I witnessed it because that pretty much describes exactly what happened. The patella will slip out of its normal position and the initial slip is painful for your chihuahua. He may yelp or cry out in pain and raise his leg up like this. And when he does that, it stretches the quadricep muscles and the patella slips back into place. So how can you prevent this and save money in vet bills? First, I say this all the time, but first, make sure your chihuahua never becomes overweight. While I'm on the subject, I'm going to have a course, an online course, about how to step-by-step step how to help your chihuahua to lose weight. It's such a common problem among so many chihuahua owners, and it's a very difficult thing to deal with and so I am going to be launching soon a step-by-step -step online weight loss program for your Chihuahua so you don't want to miss that and I'm going to when it launches I'm going to make that announcement right here on YouTube so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be notified when I upload that video and you'll be one of the first to know about it. So back to patellar luxation. Many times when you take your dog to the vet for this issue, they will suggest surgery. Surgery is very expensive and it's not always necessary. Do your research before you decide to have surgery. And for more detailed information on patellar luxation and how to know, in that video I explain how you know whether or not surgery is actually necessary. And that video is right here. And there are ways that you can treat it or at least slow down the progress from home. Do not just automatically spend money on surgery. Here's a very short clip of some exercises that you can do at home with your chihuahua that will help with the patellar luxation. Lure your dog to place their front paws on a raised target. Ideally, we want the rear paws to stay in place as the dog engages their hind leg muscles to push up into a stand. I will put a link in the description below to the entire video and also to a link to some of the equipment that she uses and also a link to the balance discs, discs 
that she uses and that are very helpful with these exercises. Next up, tracheal collapse. A collapsed trachea is a condition that's very common in small breed dogs. Chihuahuas, Lopsiopsos, Maltese, Pomeranians, Pug, Shih Tzu, Toy Poodle, and of course the Yorkie. Chihuahuas being number one. The trachea is like a little vacuum hose and it has small rings around it. These rings are cartilage that keep the airways open. So how do you prevent or treat a tracheal collapse from home? Common causes of this are nutritional deficiency, a deficiency in calcium, chondroitin, glycoproteins, and again, obesity. To help prevent it from happening, supplement your dog's diet with omega-3 fatty acids and calcium, and never let your chihuahua become overweight or obese. But the most common cause of a tracheal collapse is walking your chihuahua without a halter or a harness. Never attach a leash to your dog's collar. Why is that so important? Notice in this photo, the trachea sits just below the esophagus. All it takes is the very slightest pressure on your dog's collar around the neck to cause a tracheal collapse. I forgot earlier, I have a question for you when I told you about the online course that I am working on now. I have a question for you. Have you ever purchased an online course on helping your Chihuahua to lose weight or Chihuahua nutrition or training of any sort? Have you ever purchased an online course? If you have, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you found it helpful. If you did, why? If you didn't, why not? So on to hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is a medical term for critically low blood sugar levels. Hypoglycemia can be very serious, but it can also, if caught early, easily be treated from home if you know what to look for. Puppies and very active chihuahuas especially are prone to it. Puppies are vulnerable because they've not yet developed the ability to regulate blood glucose levels in the blood and they require a higher amount of glucose than adult chihuahuas do. I can tell you firsthand just how scary the symptoms can be. When I got my first two chihuahuas, I had no idea. And so each time it happened, I rushed them to the vet. If the vet happened to be closed, I rushed them to emergency vet, which was very costly in vet bills, believe me. So the first symptom you may notice is lethargy, extreme lethargy. Your chihuahua may stagger, look glassy-eyed, and even simply fall to the floor limply when you try to stand him up. Trembling can also be a sign as well as a stupor, and if left untreated, coma and death. So how can you prevent this from happening? When your chihuahua is a puppy, first of all, it's a good idea to feed them several small meals during the day rather than just once or twice a day. That helps to regulate and keep their blood sugar levels up. If you should notice any of the symptoms above, immediately give your chihuahua sugar water or better yet, caro syrup. I never ever go anywhere with my chihuahuas that is on a trip without caro syrup. I learned the hard way and through experience and so I carry it with me everywhere I go. You will be surprised how quickly your chihuahua just comes right out of it and is just his same usual self, as if nothing had ever happened. But if they don't immediately come out of it, after you've given them sugar water or caro syrup, then take them to the vet immediately. But if it's caught early, a trip to the vet is not even necessary. Even though this is most common with puppies, it can also happen with adults and that's why I carry this caro syrup with me everywhere I go. And a little liquid medicine dispenser that you can find anywhere, but I'll put a link in the description below. 
And next we have hydrocephalus, which literally means water on the brain. The water is actually an excess of cerebral spinal fluid that has leaked inside the skull and causes the brain to swell. There are two types, that is congenital and acquired. Acquired hydrocephalus develops when the flow of cere cerebral spinal fluid is blocked somehow by an infection, tumor, or swelling. This is not something that you can actually save money on at the vet because treatment will be very expensive, often require surgery. But what I can tell you is that often that surgery can be performed at a veterinary teaching hospital and will cost you much less. Just Google the nearest veterinary teaching hospital but the very best way to avoid this and the costly vet bills that go with it is to never ever buy a puppy from a pet store or a puppy mill. If you buy from a breeder, please make sure that it is a, le that it is a legitimate breeder, a responsible breeder. Don't miss my video on puppy mills and how you may actually have a puppy mill chihuahua and not even know it. You can watch that video right here. Teeth issues and dental disease. Teeth problems plague chihuahuas and other small breed dogs far, far more than larger breed dogs. Why is that? It's because chihuahuas and smaller breed dogs have the same amount of teeth as large breed dogs, but they're all crowded into a tiny little mouth, which makes for a great breeding ground for bacteria, which causes gingivitis or gum disease. And such a crowded mouth doesn't allow much room for bone between the roots of teeth. So even a mild case can be devastating to a chihuahua. Prevention always is the key. Brush your chihuahua's teeth at least three times a week. Dental chews and treat are not enough. Neither are additives that you add to their water. Those alone are not enough. They may help along with brushing, but alone those things will not prevent gingivitis or dental disease. If you have trouble getting your chihuahua to cooperate so you can brush their teeth, watch this video on how to condition your chihuahua to be more cooperative and accept their teeth being brushed. And yes, it is possible. It will take time and it'll take patience, but it is possible and so worth it in the end. It'll save you hundreds of dollars of vet bills. But also, not only that the brushing, be sure and have your, uh, your chihuahua's teeth cleaned professionally at least once a year. Twice is even better because they're so prone to dental disease. You can watch this video right here of my Cora having a professional dental cleaning. When she had this dental procedure done, she also had 10 teeth pulled, which can be very costly. So this is not an issue or not something that you can just skip. Not if you wanna save money on vet bills. And not to mention the pain that rotten teeth cause your chihuahua. And letting their dental hygiene go can cause a whole host of other diseases, making those vet bills continue to pile up. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of all of my next videos. Everything I mentioned here, I put a link to in the description below, so don't forget to check them out. But until next time, my chihuahuas, my four chihuahuas and I wish you many, many, many happy chihuahua tail wags and many sloppy chihuahua kisses. Until next time, bye.